Hello, my name is Leonard Rich and I'm the Administrative Director of the Lawrence County Career and Technical Center. And I'm bringing you this video message today to discuss the latest order out of Harrisburg from the Pennsylvania Department of Health, Pennsylvania Department of Education and comments made by Governor Tom Watt. So what you see before you here is a press release from yesterday. And in this press release, it is titled, Wolf Administration Requires Masking in Schools early learning and child care settings to keep students safely in classrooms and Delta variant out. <clears throat> Harrisburg, with a focus on protecting students and keeping them in classrooms, Governor Tom Wolf joined the Departments of Health, Human Services and Education today to discuss the current state of COVID-19 and a new Secretary of Health order requiring masks to be worn inside the K-12 school buildings, early learning programs, and child care providers. The order takes effect at 12.01, Tuesday, September 7th. I will be sending out this press release so you can read the order yourself. Quote, my office has received an outpouring of messages from parents asking the administration to protect all children by requiring masks in school, said Governor Wolf. The science is clear. The Delta variant is highly transmissible and dangerous to the unvaccinated, many of whom are children too young to receive the vaccine. Requiring masks in school will keep our students safer and in the classroom where we all want them to be. So let's press pause there. Yesterday in advance, and in anticipation of this announcement, I reached out to the governor's office four times to express my discontent, only to be put into a queue, your caller number six, your caller number five, your caller number four, and so on. And then finally, when you get to the top, it says, due to the high volume of calls, no one is available to take your call. So I will be trying again today. Relative to the Lawrence County Career and Technical Center, all students and staff who are at the Career Center are old enough to get a vaccine should they so choose. Vaccines are medicine, masks are medical devices. Those are individual decisions. Those are decisions that you make with your children as a family. It is not the role of uh, institutional education to either encourage nor discourage masking, to either encourage or discourage vaccines. Medical devices and medicine are up to you. Press release goes further. I preferred for local school boards to make this decision. Unfortunately, an aggressive nationwide campaign is spreading misinformation about mask wearing and pressuring and intimidating school districts to reject mask policies that will keep kids safe in school. As we see cases among children increase in Pennsylvania and throughout the country, this is especially dangerous and challenging as we seek to keep kids in school and maintain a safe and healthy environment. Let's press pause again. So there are 500 school districts. <clears throat> there are approximately 87, 88 career and technical centers. Let's look at the school districts. So out of the 500 school districts, at one point, uh, 474 school districts had submitted their health and safety plans, and only 59 of those 474 required universal masking for a mere 12%. Since 88% of local authorities disagreed with the governor, I believe that played into the action that we saw yesterday. There are two sides to the story regarding masking. 
I understand why those who feel compromised wear a mask and I support their choice to do so. But we do know that COVID-19 is an aerosol virus. We do know that the aerosol will go through the masks. The particles are small enough. We also know that it is a novel coronavirus and whether it's the common cold, whether it's influenza, we have seen novel coronaviruses before. COVID-19 is now part of the human existence. And may I say, we will see different novel coronaviruses in the future. So um, the conversation is not monolithic. I think you need to look at both sides and make a decision that best serves you. Also, when we talk about increases in cases, particularly in school, I am unaware of any youth softball, youth baseball, any athletic camps that were canceled or closed due to COVID. These games were played. These students have been in contact with one another in a much less unstructured environment for approximately the last 90 days. Now that they are returning to a structured environment, some students may be symptomatic. As such, they may be symptom. And some who are sent home get tested. And then those tests come back as positive. So if we've gone for 90 days or so with a small pool of uh, students or young people reporting cases, and then they come back to a structured environment and we have more reports of more cases, it's not surprisingly how that occurred and it's not surprising how uh, percentages increased as well. Also, we need to differentiate cases outside of school versus inside of school. Does this order solve a problem that does not exist? For example, the Delta virus is much more transmissible, but it's also less deadly. So we have no mortalities of any school age children, nine years of age or younger in Pennsylvania schools. We have 0.0001% mortality of any school age children in Pennsylvania. Now, every death is a tragedy and certainly um, we would mourn any child who suffered severe respiratory illness, damage, or God forbid, death. But we are, when we are devising policy, we do not devise policy for one, we devise policy for the masses. Continuing. Acting Health Secretary Allison Beam was joined at a press conference today by Governor Tom Wolf, Education Secretary Noah Ortega, Human Services Acting Secretary Meg Sneed, and President of the Pennsylvania Chapter of American uh, Academy of Pediatrics, Dr. Trude Hecker. The reality we are living in now is much different than it was a month ago, Acting Secretary of Health Allison Beam stated. With case counts increasing, the situation has reached the point that we need to take this action to protect our children, teachers, and staff. Okay, let's pause again. Let's pause again. With case counts in increasing, what's the demographic? What's the contraction rate of children? What's the transmissibility rate of children? Where are any or all documented cases of transfer of the disease from student to teacher. She states the science is clear. I raised a few questions. If we want to keep our schools open, maintain classroom learning and allow sports and other activities to continue, masking significantly increases our chances of doing so. So let me remind you, this order does not apply to athletics. It does apply to the school day, but somehow magically those concerns go away at the end of the school day. 
Now, I understand that part of the logic is that these activities are taking place outside. And maybe sports like cross country, uh, you can social distance. But students are uh, in the band, students are playing football, students are uh, playing soccer. And when you are coming in close contact or indeed physical contact with other people's bodies and body fluids, etc., for a period of hours, again, the science is clear. Instead of period, I would put question mark. I would like to know um, what science that was based on, or was it just a political decision? Universal masking in schools, which the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommend, reduce the risk that the entire classroom will need a quarantine due to a positive COVID case. This order ensures Pennsylvania children are participating in classroom learning without disruptions. The Delta variant has been a driving force in the pandemic since the previous school year. The variant is more contagious than the original strain of the virus, accounting for more than 92% of COVID cases in Pennsylvania. Since July, when schools first began discussing health and safety plans, Pennsylvania's COVID-19 caseload increased from less than 300 a day to more than 3,000 a day, with cases among school-aged children increasing by more than 11,000 in the last month and 79,000 from January 2021 to August 2021. Again, I would say that with that gap in the summer, I didn't hear anecdotally or otherwise about cases in our community or about local recreation associations quarantining children. Additionally, new cases of COVID-19 among children enrolled in licensed child care facilities have increased significantly in recent months. According to data reported to the DHS by child care providers, for example, on June 4th, child care providers reported eight cases of COVID-19 among children in the previous week. On August 27th, the number of the new COVID cases among children in child care the previous week was 162. The Wolf Administration continues to urge eligible Pennsylvanians to get vaccinated as it is the best defense at stopping the spread of the virus. However, there is currently no vaccine approved for children under 12 years old. For eligible adolescents, 18 percent of children ages 12 to 14 are fully vaccinated. 38% of children 15 to 19 are fully vaccinated. Again, the vaccine is medicine. From our perspective, we will not endorse nor condemn the decision you make in the best interest of you and your children. If you're eligible and you feel the vaccine and you agree with what they say that it is their best defense, then do it. If you're uncomfortable and you question the vaccine, then don't get it. Again, we will not encourage nor discourage the vaccine. After months apart, students and educators are eagerly returning to classrooms across Pennsylvania for the new school year, said Education No Ortega. Unfortunately, we've already seen schools across the nation close because of COVID-19. Wearing masks is a proven strategy that will help Pennsylvania schools reduce the spread of COVID-19, protect their communities, and keep our students and educators where we know it's vital for them to be, teaching and learning, growing together safely in classrooms. So the order, as you can see, uh, continues to move forward, but you understand uh, its impact on the career and technical center. So let me say, where do we go from here? So during the press conference, I watched it with our solicitor and I asked him some questions and I asked him to do some research. Here's what I need to know. What exactly are we ordered to do? And what does the word enforcement mean? Let me give you a parallel. The speed limit on an interstate 65 miles an hour. Let us say you go over 65, you go 75 miles an hour, and you get pulled over. 
and you receive that citation. You're not innocent nor guilty yet. You can sign away and say you're guilty, but you're also entitled to a hearing and you go to a magistrate. And the magistrate then determines guilt or innocence. What are we ordered to do? And what does it mean to enforce? If the school does the job of the policeman in my anecdote, is not the Department of Health then the magistrate? So we have more questions than answers right now. I want to keep you abreast of the situation. I intend on meeting with our solicitor today and advancing those conversations. I'll let you know what he thinks of my analogy relative to enforcement. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Again, we're here, we're ready, we're respectful, we're safe because we go, we're supposed to go, we're there on time. And each and every day, we're using our God-given abilities to do the very best we can. Thank you and have a great day.